The Mosaic Expedition is a year-long adventure in the Arctic where we take an icebreaker and freeze it into the sea ice and passively drift with that sea ice with all kinds of instrumentation installed on and around the ship. Well, we're there because the ice is in decline, right? We know this in general that the sea ice is declining pretty rapidly. It's really important for the climate of our Earth. And so we want to understand that process. We want to understand why the ice is declining so rapidly. At a climate scale, ice you know, plays a role for our Earth system, right? The uh, Arctic is very cold, the tropics are very warm. This drives large scale circulation and weather patterns. This is part of our global system. As we lose ice, what becomes exposed is the surface ocean, which is dark. And you can imagine that the ocean now is absorbing all of that heat. And unfortunately, it's that positive feedback, right? So the more ice you lose each year, the more open water you have. We see warming of the oceans, which means warming of the planet. And so loss of sea ice has a direct influence on global warming. Sea ice grows and shrinks each year as it freezes in the winter and melts again in the summer. The Arctic summer ice minimum in 2019 was the second lowest ever recorded. The Arctic warming rate is twice the global average, and some researchers believe, even with climate action, ice-free summers will be seen before 2050. The Mosaic Expedition will be in the Arctic for a full year to gain a better understanding of the complex Arctic climate system. Many of our previous studies in the Arctic have been at a time where we can access the Arctic. And that's typically in the summer months, so May through late September. But we lack many measurements from the winter and early spring. And that's because we've never had the opportunity or very limited opportunity to actually be there. You can't just go there at one time of year and hope to understand the sea ice life cycle. You actually have to be there for the whole year to understand how these processes vary and change uh, over different seasons. During the 12 month period, the Polar Stern will be the base for the interdisciplinary science expedition. So that flat area would be a potential point for Red City. There are over 600 scientists involved from all over the world, with 60 on board at a time. Their state-of-the-art detection tools will monitor and record data on the atmosphere, sea ice, the ocean under the ice, and its ecosystems. So this is the overarching goal of Mosaic, is to bring these things together, understand the linkages and the cross-cutting processes and feedbacks between those compartments of the Arctic system so that we can not just improve, say, weather predictions, but that we can also improve our predictions of how sea ice will change in the future as we predict how global temperatures will change. Their research work continues, even under extreme Arctic conditions. Oh, you think we should do one more? There are all kinds of complexities of working and living in the Arctic. It's cold, of course. The ice is moving, so there's all of those challenges. When I was there before, it was dark. We were in the wintertime, and so it was dark all day long. Pitch black, even, and so we're, you know, the only light is your headlamp, and you go out there and it's windy and it's minus 40 degrees. So it's quite an extreme environment. And, you know, now we look forward to going out there in the summer when the sun just circles the sky, 24 hours of light. You know, as soon as we entered the ice in September, uh, within hours we saw a polar bear uh, out on the ice. You know, they're curious, right? They, they like to go up and say, well, you know, what is this device that's out here that I've never seen? And so they sniff things. Sometimes they like to play with things. They actually took out one of my research stations. I have this meteorological station and a polar bear uh, had a little fun with it and uh, did some damage. And, and so, yeah, polar bears are definitely a part of the activities out there. And, but a typical day includes a lot of uh, checking on instrumentation, making sure it's operating well. It includes teams of people that go out on the ice on little mini adventures out to, uh, say, sample the ice. They go take ice cores uh, and go out 
and collect those as a group. Or go and take some, uh, some instrument out to look at the transfer of gas at the surface through these little chambers that can be put out on the ice. So each day there are little adventures like that to go do very targeted activities. we execute a whole suite of tasks to build this increasingly large, complex data set of measurements. I'm a microbial oceanographer by training, so I'm very interested in this tiny, you can't see them, but the tiny single cell organisms that live in the ocean and in sea ice. Things like bacteria and small cells that are known as phytoplankton. Phytoplankton, or plant plankton, form the base of the marine food web, indirectly feeding everything from small fish to multi-ton whales. They typically bloom every spring, and the decline of sea ice is having an impact on when and where this is happening, which has a knock-on effect on the whole ecosystem. These little guys, they're like the, the engines of global geochemical cycles. So I'm particularly interested in these guys and how they change carbon and nitrogen in seawater and in sea ice. And that means that they also control things like climate relevant gases, like carbon dioxide and the production of oxygen. The data is so valuable to us as scientists, and it's valuable well beyond the individuals that go to the field. We're serving a whole research community of people that are interested in this data. The Arctic is not able to cool the Northern Hemisphere in the way it was before. And it also means that we see much more drastic extremes in weather in Northern latitudes, in the mid-latitudes where you and I are based. The emergencies that we've seen, right, these crises that we've seen around the globe, many of them are related to a changing climate system. We don't understand what drives them. One of our goals is to get a lot of this information so that we can better understand those processes, so that we can have models that better represent what's playing out on global scales, uh, and then to feed that information to society for a variety of reasons, you know, to feed them to the politicians and decision makers that need good information uh, that will support this decision making process. And being in the Arctic and recognizing that this amazing Ice scape is precious, has an important role in our Earth's sustainability, and trying to learn about it so that we can move forward and have some positive action. I think that makes you realize just how important it is to be there and to be doing the best work that you can do. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.